Hello guys and welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. Today we're looking at a problem relating a lake reservoir that's converting energy, potential energy that is, into electric energy. So we're getting electricity coming out of the transmission lines here. And it's all about energy conversion. It's an introductory problem to thermodynamics and to just engineering problems in general. And let's take a look at the problem statement. So the water in a lake is used to generate electricity by the installation of a hydraulic turbine generator at a location where the depth of the water is 50 meters. Water is to be supplied at a rate of 5,000 kilograms per second. If the electric power generated is measured to be 1860 kilowatts and the generated efficiency is 95%, determine the mechanical efficiency of the turbine and the shaft power supplied by the turbine to the generator. So what's happening here? Well, we have this reservoir, and this, um, this is a picture I got out of a, a paper. And this guy here has 50 meters in depth, right? So the, the reservoir, the lake reservoir, this is the lake here, it has 50 meters in depth, so that the water sitting here on top has the potential energy of, as we know, potential energy is the mass times the gravity times height. So it has this 50 meters of potential energy here available. So as we allow this water to come down, what's happening is that we're transforming this potential energy of the water that it has on top here into kinetic energy, right? That's the velocity it's acquiring. As it's sitting here in the lake, it's stationary, that it has no kinetic energy and all potential energy. But as it's dropping from the, high, the, the top of the lake here all the way to the bottom here into the river, then we're converting that potential energy into kinetic energy, right? So that's where the um, velocity comes in. Then what happens is that this uh, water with a certain velocity is used to push it, transfer its momentum into the turbine, right? The turbine is going to start spinning because of this water that's coming through at 5,000 kilograms per second. And the spinning of this turbine is going to uh, go through a generator and this generator is going to convert this uh, spinning motion, that is that this kinetic energy, into electrical energy, right? That's the, 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 the thing the generator is, was built to do. Right, it's precisely its purpose. So what we have here, we have two energy conversions. We first have potential energy from the reservoir, from the lake, into kinetic energy, that is the velocity of the water down here. And then we have the kinetic energy into electrical energy through the generator, right? In reality, what we have, we have, you can think of this as, as in like four uh, places in which the energy is. You can think about the energy, the potential energy of the water molecules here on top of the lake. Then the kinetic energy is still the water that is all the way down here in the bottom of the lake in the river, and then the kinetic energy of the turbine as it's spinning, and finally the electrical energy that's being outputted by this generator into the transmission lines. Cool. We know a couple of things. We know that the generator is 95% efficient, so we know that this guy here has an efficiency of 95%. Uh, we know the total output of the system. We know the electric energy, electric power is 1860 kilowatts. And we know the amount of not only the height, but also the amount of water that we have from the beginning. So that allows us to know how much total energy is available for the system. And then we can relate the uh, transmission of the turbine and the generator. Let's first think about the following. The efficiency, uh, the total efficiency of, the, of this whole thing, that is, you know, the amount of energy I'm outputting. So let's just put it in like so. The amount of energy being outputted in the form of electric energy, that is divided by the total amount of energy available, right? In this case, we're all, always doing energy rate, right? So doing energy in um, per unit time, so that's power to be more precise, uh, amount of energy available. Yeah, so that translates into the uh, electrical energy being outputted by the end of it and the potential energy we had to, from the start, right? But another way to relate these two things is to relate the total efficiency, to relate what is the efficiency of the things that are Converting energy. So we have the efficiency here of the turbine. Just put, you know, uh, T subscript T here, here and G for generator here. And this guy we know it's 95%, but the, the turbine we're not sure. And then the total one has also is also going to be related to the multiplication of these two efficiencies, right? We can think of it this way. If they're both, uh, let's say we have um, 10 uh, megawatts just to work with from the start, right? That's the total available power we have. 
if the turbine is 50% efficient and the generator is 100% efficient, then we're only going to get 50% out of this, right? So we're going to get 5 megawatts out of it. If, however, they're both 50% efficient, right? They're both 50% efficient, then that means that we're going to lose 50% when it goes, when we're converting um, the kinetic energy of the water into the kinetic energy of the turbine. And then another 50% is going to be lost when we're converting into electric energy, right? So therefore, if that's the case, then we're only going to end up with 5 megawatts at the end. Right? So that's why it's a multiplication between the two. If one of them is broken and then one of them is 0%, so it doesn't really matter what it, what this other one is, right? This one can be 100% and still it would be the total output would be 0, right? Even if the generator is working, if the turbine is not working properly, it's not spinning, then we're not going to get any electric energy being outputted by this. All right, so that's something to note. What else? We can know exactly what it's the potential energy, right? So we know exactly what this guy is, right? The energy available. We can know exactly what that is because the uh, potential energy, is the mass times the gravity times the height. We know gravity, we know the height, that's 15 meters. And then we don't know the mass, but we know the mass flow rate. So what I can do is I can take the derivative on both sides, right? So we can derive here in respect to time on both sides. And then what's going to happen is this mass flow rate, this mass is going to become mass flow rate, which I do have, right? Gravity is not going to change with time, it's just going to stay steady at our constant uh, Earth's gravity all the time. And then the height, right, the height, the height would change with time if this lake was very small, right? Note that they say in the beginning that this is a large lake. And the reason why they say it's a large lake is that they're saying, you know, the height is not going to change because of some water coming out of it. The amount of water coming out of this uh, opening here, aperture here, is not enough to actually decrease in a significant way the height of this reservoir. So therefore, we don't have to worry about our height changing with time. That's what that large lake is saying there. So in other words, this becomes, you know, um, the rate at which my potential energy is changing is just gravity times the height times the rate at which my mass is flowing, right? So in other words, my mass flow rate. And I happen to have all of this, right? So I know this is going to be my 9.81 meters per second squared. I know this is 50 meters. And I know my mass flow rate is 5,000 kilograms per second. Okay, and this gives me the uh, number of 4, uh, 24, 50. Now, what's the unit here? Well, we need to check to be sure. We know this guy is meters per second squared. We know this other guy is meters, and we know this is kilograms per second. So what happens here? Big mess, right? So if I just put, if I just leave it like so, I'm going to have meters squared kilograms by seconds cubed. That doesn't really tell me much. However, we know a couple of things, right? We know that Newton's second law says that force equals mass times acceleration. And we also know that energy is defined as the integral, as I need to go from 1 to 2, of the force and the distance that I need to push something forward. Let's put dx here, not to confuse the time. Right? Under these um, conditions, what we can note is that this is unit for acceleration, right? It's actually from the acceleration of gravity. And we also have a unit for mass here. So if I combine, let me just highlight this, if I combine the yellow parts here, what I have is force, right? So that's the same thing as Newton right there. So I can convert this into, okay, so this is just a Newton times a meter divided by seconds, correct? Now, a Newton times a meter, as per this bottom relationship here, is our definition of energy. And a joule, therefore, is just a Newton times a meter. So we can convert this further into joules per second. And then finally, we know that joules per second is the SI unit for watts, right? Watt is defined as a joule per second, the rate joules per second. So the unit here is 2450 watts. That is the potential energy, or should say the potential energy rate available out of this reservoir. Okay, so this is what we start with. This is the total, if everything's working 100%, this is what I'm going to output as electric energy. Okay? Beautiful. So for my electrical energy, I would need everything to be working 100%, but we already know the generator is 95%, so we're not going to get that. We're sure not going to get that. Okay, next up is, I can see what's the total efficiency of this thing, right? Because we, as we talked about here, let me copy this. The total efficiency is how much I'm outputting divided by how much I have available. I know both, right? So I know, let me read this. I know that I'm outputting, uh, what was it, 18, 1862? I'm outputting 1862. And I have available, as we just calculated, 24, 
<laughs> right so that gives me about 75.8 we just let me check that now 76 okay so the total efficiency of my system is 76 percent however i also know this is related to let me change colors here it's related to the efficiency of the turbine and the efficiency of the generator and i happen to know this right so therefore if i want to know what's the efficiency of the turbine i just need to divide by the efficiency of the generator so the efficiency of the turbine will just be the 76 percent divided by the efficiency of the generator which is 95 percent let me just check again if that's the case yeah 95 percent so that's you know 80 percent okay so we have a turbine that has an efficiency of 80 percent and we have a generator that has an efficiency of 95 percent so that does it for part a what's the mechanical efficiency of the turbine we just found out that and then what's the shaft power supplied by the turbine to the generator so let's think of it this way we have let's let's go back to this idea here right we're converting converting things so we're converting the potential energy into kinetic energy kinetic energy into electrical energy the question is asking us what is being supplied on this stage here so we know at this point here we have 24 50 that's watts we know at this point here we have 1860 2 and that's also watts and the question is over here what's the energy being supplied here now there are two ways to go about this we can go via this path here because we know that from here to here we need the uh, turbine and this guy's 80 uh, percent efficient or we can go backwards from here because we know that from here to here we have the generator should do, do this from here to here we have the generator and we know the generator is 95 percent efficient so either or you recall you can think of it this way if um if my 82 1862 watts is 95% is what we get at, at an, at an out of 95% generator. If it were 100%, right? If it were 100%, then this is what I would get. I would get x or y. Okay, so I just do this times this divided by that, right? So if I take my 1862 and I divide by my 95%, I'm going to be getting what would be if it were 100%. That would be the equivalent of what if I didn't have this drop in, um, if it, this drop due to the efficiency of the generator. And what I get here out of this is what did I get? Never wise. 1960. Okay, so that's that will be our answer there for part B. Okay, the other way around to do this is we can do it like I said from this end here. That's going to work too. So you're going to like okay. So I have the 24 50 watts, and this is 100% of the energy I had originally. Right now I'm losing a chunk because I know my my turbine is only 80 percent efficient so how much will i have to be able to give to the generator well it's going to be 80 percent of that so i just take my 24 50 and multiply that by 80 percent 80 percent and i'm going to get the same 1960 watts which obviously is also the answer so you can choose which way to go which is more intuitive for you you know either is fine um so we have the 80 percent answer here for part a and we have the 1960 watts as the answer for part B. Let me know if you have any questions. If this video helped you out, consider liking the video, and we'll talk soon.